Hello everybody, how are you guys doing? Hope everybody is doing amazingly well. Welcome back to another lesson of English with Ashish. Do you guys know what a subject complement is? Do you know a lot of people confuse an object with a subject complement? So today in this lesson, we'll understand, we'll master what a subject complement is, how to use it in a sentence, what it does, different types of subject complements, how to identify it, everything about it. So today we will master it, right? So make sure you watch it until the end. I'm excited. As always, I know you guys are too. Let's do it. All right, everybody. Now let's understand what exactly a subject complement is. So what we'll do is we'll uh, look at the word subject complement and we'll break it down in two words, subject plus complement, and we'll try to make something out of it. We'll try to understand what it means by breaking it down. Let's do that. Subject plus complement. What is a subject? A subject in English is uh, something or somebody that performs the action in a sentence, that does something in a sentence or the entire sentence is about. That is what a subject is. Now, what is a complement? A complement is something that completes the meaning of a part in a sentence, right? Uh, that gives essential information about it. That is what a complement is. Now, what is a subject complement? A subject complement is a type of a complement that gives information about the subject of a sentence. So a subject complement completes the meaning of the subject. It gives information about it. Now, what kind of information? It either gives a new name to the subject, renames it or modifies it, gives information about it. All right. So uh, it comes after a linking verb and gives information about the subject. All right. That is why we call it a subject complement. And without the subject complement in a sentence, the sentence is incomplete. It's ungrammatical. All right. It does not make any sense. It comes after a linking verb and gives information about the subject. And without it, the subject is incomplete. It's ungrammatical. All right. Now let's look at the definition I've written on the screen. All right. <coughs> okay. A subject complement is a word or a group of words. So it can be a word, just one word, can be a group of words. That could be a phrase or a clause, right? That either renames the subject, gives a new name to the subject or modifies it. So it renames the subject using a noun, noun phrase or a noun clause, right? So when it renames the subject, gives uh, the subject a new name, uh, it is a noun or a noun phrase or a noun clause. But uh, when it modifies it, it is an adjective or an adjective phrase. It can be a prepositional phrase as well. We will talk about it going forward. All right. So important thing. It, subject complement, comes after a linking verb. That is very, very important. It comes after a linking verb. A linking verb equates the subject to its complement. So it works like this sign equal to. All right. So it, it equates the subject right with its subject complement. This is what a linking verb is. All right. Let's keep reading. So it comes after a linking verb and identifies the subject. We have a detailed lesson on linking verb. You can watch that. I have a detailed post on my website as well. You can check that out. Linking verb, right? It's out there on my website. I'll leave the link in the description as well. You can uh, go through it. All right. Let's come back to the topic. So a subject complement comes after a linking verb and identifies it identifies the subject all right when it uh, renames the subject acting like a, a noun we call it a predicate nominative we call it a predicate nominative right and when it modifies it using an adjective adjective phrase we call it a predicate adjective predicate nominative noun right gives it a name predicate adjective an adjective modifying it all right now how many types of subject complements we have? Two types. Predicate nominative, nominom, name, 
noun gives it a name second predicate adjective right let me give you an example right now so let's take a subject for say uh, rahul all right rahul let's take a linking verb is is if i want to give rahul a new name i'll say rahul is my enemy right right so my enemy is a noun noun phrase rahul equals to my enemy that is a noun i can say rahul is uh, a teacher so a teacher is a noun that i'm giving to rahul rahul is a ghost right that is another name all right now these are names that i'm giving to rahul my enemy a teacher a ghost right and you can equate so my enemy the person i'm referring to calling my enemy is not different from rahul it's just one person all right now i can also modify rahul with an adjective right i can say rahul is smart rahul is very smart right rahul is uh good looking right rahul is extremely hard working beautiful something like that right so i here i'm giving information about rahul using an adjective so i'm modifying the subject so these both uh, are subject complements the first one is giving a name to the subject and the second one is modifying it and you can equate it with the sign rahul equals to smart rahul smart rahul very very smart rahul very good looking good looking all right rahul my enemy one person rahul a teacher one guy only all right now let's understand both these types one by one predicate nominative all right a subject complement that renames the subject we have some examples let's look at these examples example number 1 mono is my best friend so mono is the subject of the sentence the sentence is about mono so mono is working as the subject all right let's call it sub is is the linking verb let's call it le lk sorry l v let's call it lv okay just give me a second lv linking verb my best friend and and a linking verb is a type of a main verb my best friend is a noun phrase which is a noun phrase working as the subject complement right it's giving a name to the subject right monu equals to my best friend all right i'm giving a name to the subject monu my best friend and monu are not two different people it's just one guy right monu equals to my best friend so my best friend is a noun phrase that is working as a subject complement giving the subject a name and without it the sentence does not make any sense any sense whatsoever right so if i take this piece of information out monu is you will ask what monu is what it does not make any sense right so this piece of information subject complement is essential to the entire meaning of the sentence right it's identifying the subject monu and give it a, a new name all right monu is what my best friend my enemy uh, the love of my life um, uh, monu is a star monu is a superstar monu is an actor right whatever you want to call monu okay second example you can use a different linking verb as well so it's basically this thing is working like an equal to sign monu it's equating the subject to its complement all right second example you are use the subject here subject equals to subject complement you are a super superman all right so i'm calling you which is the subject here a superman you equal to you superman all right superman a superman all right so a superman is the subject complement here right it's identifying the subject you and giving it a name you can use a different linking verb as well you were a superman you have been a superman right if you do not know anything about a linking verb go check that lesson out uh, it's on my uh, channel it's on my website as well right the most common Uh, linking verbs are to be form of linking verbs is am are was were 
um, has been, have been, had been, right? Just check that lesson out. All right. That example. He's not who he used to be. He is not. He is subject, blinking verb, not negation. Is what? Who is who he used to be? So who he used to be is a noun clause that is referring to a person. All right. That is referring to a person. Who is the subject? He. All right. So here we're using a noun clause. Now, this is what I want you to know. It can be a noun clause as well. It's generally a noun phrase, but it can be a noun clause as well. For example, let me give you another example. The problem is, or uh, the problem is that <clears throat> you don't listen to anybody. Okay. This is a sentence. The problem is that you don't listen to anybody. So what is the subject? The problem. This is the subject. This is a linking verb, right? The problem is what? That you don't listen to anybody. This is a noun clause working as the subject complement, right? Working as the subject complement, identifying the subject. The problem equals to, what is the problem? That you don't listen to anybody. So, a subject complement as a predicate nominative can be just one word, can be a phrase, right? Can be a noun clause as well. We have just seen that. Okay, now predicate adjective examples. When you want to modify the subject, when you want to give information about the subject in terms of adjectives, right? Uh, you want to describe it, give any type of information about it. Uh, you will use adjectives, predicate adjectives, right? Uh, you can also use a prepositional phrase. I'll, I'll give you examples uh, about that as well <laughs> in a moment. Okay, example number one. The food is extremely good. The food is extremely good. So the sentence is about the subject food, right? And we're giving information about it. The food is, is what? Extremely good. So I am giving information about the subject, which is the food. How is the food? Extremely good, right? Which is uh, an adjective phrase extremely good all right so food equals to how extremely good okay uh, here I'm not giving a name another name to the subject uh, here I am modifying the subject all right second example you subject right subject look linking verb so here look is not working as an action verb it's working as a linking verb you'll know in a moment you look smart in this dress you look smart. You're not doing anything. You're not looking at anywhere. You just look smart, right? So, I'm calling you smart. So, whenever you wear this dress, you look smart. Your presence is smart, right? You look smart. So, look here is a linking verb. It's not an action verb. So, you are smart, all right? It's working as a linking verb. Third example. Rahul was afraid to fail. Rahul subject was linking verb was what afraid subject complement predicate adjective afraid to fail right Rahul was afraid to fail now notice that without these uh, pieces of information subject complements predicate nominative and predicate adjectives the sentences do not make any sense so uh, a subject complement is a noun noun phrase noun clause we had we have just uh, seen that uh, when it's a predicate nominative, it's a noun, noun phrase, noun clause. Now, when it's a predicate adjective, it's an adjective, simple adjective, right? Or an adjective phrase. Can it be anything else? Yes, it can. That's a good question. Always ask questions. More questions will lead you to more clarity. All right. It can be a prepositional phrase as well. All right. Prepositional phrase. And here, the prepositional phrase will work as an adjective. All right, let me show you an example. Uh, we are in a good mood. So here, in a good mood is a prepositional phrase that is giving information about the subject we and just giving information about us, right? The subject. So it's working as an adjective. All right, more examples. Simi was 
under the bus under or let's say sofa simi subject was linking verb under the sofa prepositional phrase subject complement right it's a prepositional phrase that's identifying the subject and giving information about it right so simi was where under the sofa so it's giving information about simi all right uh, it's a prepositional phrase that is that is working as an adjective all right and it's a subject complement without it the sentence does not make any sense try taking it out try taking it out of the sentence see simi was the sentence does not make any sense all right so it can be uh, a prepositional phrase as well now it's very important to master what a linking verb is right so i have the list of all linking verbs to be form which is the most common where uh, it has three different forms uh, normal to be right which has is am are was were uh, with models maybe might be should be would be then the being form uh, being form is being am being are being was being were being then the been form has been have been had been uh, and with the models right and then some other linking verbs to seem to look right feel sound taste smell stay become go right just have a look at them uh, visit the website for more details all right now an important thing to note here is that some of the linking verbs also function as action verbs and here are the verbs the most common verbs i think the only verbs that can function as both the linking verb and the action verb these are some verbs that can function as both an action verb and a linking verb right let me show you some examples you will be able to identify i'm sure all right example number 1 i tasted the food i tasted the food so su the subject is i i tasted the food right tasted is the verb let's not call it a linking verb or an action verb just a verb i tasted the food the food is definitely not a predicate adjective right it's not giving information about the subject i right so it's not an adjective is it a name can i call myself the food no that is not possible can i can i say i equal to the food can i say that no it does not make any sense so it's not a subject complement here tasted is working as as an action verb i did something i did something so it's not equating the subject to its complement it's it's uh, palpable right you can see that it's visible right i did something i tasted the food right the very first uh, thing is you will be able to feel the difference if it's an action verb you will be able to feel the action the second thing is uh if it's an action verb it will have an object or it will have a modifier and you won't be able to equate the subject with the object or a modifier right that will not be possible so here it's an action verb second example the food tasted delicious all right the food taste tasted delicious here delicious is an adjective that is giving information about the subject food so the food cannot taste anything right food is an object it's not a human being it cannot taste any anything so it's uh, referring to the state of the food which is delicious right the food was delicious in terms of its taste all right the food tasted delicious right so here i can compare the subject i can link the subject to its complement delicious all right the food equal to delicious subject complement another example john looked at the car john looked at the car so john at the car equals to doesn't make any sense right uh, john looked so he did something john looked at the car looked here is an action verb and at the car is not subject complement right it's a modifying phrase a modifier john looked where at the car action verb john looked smart here smart is a subject complement predicate adjective john equals to smart in terms of his appearance he is smart john looked smart right 
So you will be able to feel the difference by reading the sentence, by feeling the action and by comparing the subject and what's coming after the verb, right? This is how you'll feel the difference, right? So uh, do not confuse an object with the subject complement. An object comes after an action verb, right? And you won't be able to uh, equate it with a subject. For example, I'll give you another example. If I say, Ashu kicked the ball. Let's take two examples. Kicked the ball. Rohan ate the snake or the burger. All right. So we have two examples. So Ashu kicked. First of all, you can see, you can feel it's an action verb. Kicked. Kicking is an action verb. This is the very first clue. The second thing is, Ashu cannot be the ball. If it's this part, if you think it's a subject complement, you cannot compare it with the subject. You cannot equate it with the subject because Ashu cannot be the ball. That is impossible. All right. So these are two tips. Second example, same thing. Ra Rohan ate the burger. Ate what? The burger. It's an object. But if you think it's a subject complement, this is how you'll uh, identify or, or, or come to know that it's not uh, the subject complement, it's an object. First of all, eating is an action, right? Second of all, Rohan cannot be the burger, can he? No, he can't, right? So do not confuse an object with a subject complement. Never do, do that, right? I have a lesson on uh, difference between a subject and uh, an object. Check that out. Link in the description, right? Uh, now, we have some uh, practice questions for you on your screen or some uh, sentences with some subject complements and uh, objects, right? What you have to do is to, uh, is to identify whether the underlined words are uh, subject complements or objects. This is your task, right? So that's uh, all about today's lesson and hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. If you did, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, become a part of the family and press that notification button so that every single time I come up with a lesson, you get notified and uh, Please share the lesson with others as well. If you have any question, any doubt, please, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Visit the website for uh, a detailed post on both subject complement, uh, linking verb. Check out my uh, Facebook uh, group. Join that for daily uh, dose of uh, grammar lessons, quizzes, uh, short videos, infographics. Right? You'll find all these types of things. Uh, on my group join that uh, instagram page as well links in the description and uh, yeah i'll see you soon till then keep learning have fun i'm out now scott